Good day, you're welcome to another episode of On Q. My name is Lenny Lomote, and today we have joining us all the way from Nigeria, Wanda Bante. Yeah, Problem you know, not a finish. What, sorry, were you saying something? Wanda Bante, why are you saying nah, something? I'm just trying to introduce myself. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Let me leave the floor for you then. Do that. Yes, yes, yo, you know what time it is. This is the original Bad Machine, the original Wonder Bantic up in the building. Busy. <laughs> what happens to the D in the building, though? <laughs> billing, billing. In the building, in the building. Okay. Okay, now, Wanda Bunton, for, for those who don't know um, your childhood, right, I would like you to take us through how childhood was like for you, growing up into the man you are today. Yeah, uh, my childhood, I'm always really, really glad to talk about my childhood because that's like one very important part of my life that actually molded me mm. and built me to the man that I am today. So I grew up, I'm from River State, that's like the southern part of Nigeria. I'm from Opogo, um, but the whole world knows where I come from as they call it Potakot. So I'm a Potakot boy. So, um, right. Growing up, I used to play football. It always didn't used to be music. It was football. So I was playing football back then. I was really good. Uh, I was a good striker. I still am a good striker, but I haven't played in a mm. while. Uh, so music came um, a little bit more later in my life, towards right. my the end of my high school, that secondary school. That's what we call it back here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I recorded and went to the studio for the first time. So my childhood was pretty amazing. It was just football, playing like every other kid does. Uh -huh. Then along the line, I fell into I fell in love with music and started making music. So that's it, basically. Yeah. But what exactly happened to your football dreams? Why did you shake that? Oh my Africa happened to my football dreams. So <laughs> <laughs> you get it. <laughs> no, you it's need crazy. to explain that to us. In Africa, you don't have to think go. We, re we actually need to do better because mm. if, Af uh, if Africa was serious, Nigeria was serious, right now I would have been rescuing the national team. But right, you would have been making so much money as well. You feel me? I would have been coming from the flank <laughs> by now, but they messed it up, man. They missed it. They missed it. But they have me, man. I'm representing Afrobeat, uh, taking Afrobeat to the world. Exactly. So it's still a win-win, isn't it? Still a win-win, which I yeah. agree to, definitely. Now, having to be doing the music, right, um, have there been any high, high points for you? And then also, what have been your low points? Um, of course, it's life. Life is all about highs and lows, just like music. Music is we work with frequencies, high frequencies, low frequencies. So yeah. it's, it's a life thing, you feel me? Um, the lows, let me start from the lows. Right. The lows, um, as an artist, regardless of the fact that it was music I'm doing, if I was doing any other thing in life, mm -hmm. I would have always faced challenges too, even if I wanted to be a banker, you feel me? Life challenges are inevitable. Mm -hmm. you're, oh, you're always going to come through or oh, go through through them or grow through them it depends on how you want to go through it yeah. feel me so yeah. of course those challenges um uh, a new artist trying to break in a group fan base um it's pretty challenging mm -hmm. when you don't really don't have the funds because uh, making music and promoting music is capital intensive Very. so if you're not getting the access to fund a big challenge you get me um, sometimes you might be making amazing music, real amazing music. Um, in a way, that's a challenge mm -hmm. because it's mentally challenging. So you just have to always be on, on guard, you understand? So yeah, those were the challenges. And the high points, uh, the beautiful parts of the OP, although the low points grows you and builds you to be prepared for the high points, mm -hmm. you feel me? Because yeah. um, without the low points, the high points wouldn't be there. You feel me? And you wouldn't so really the high appreciate points, it. The know. Noah Hala blowing up, taking over the world. You want to say something? No, I was saying that without the low points, you wouldn't even really appreciate your high points when they come. Of course. 
of course with, uh, if there if there's no darkness you wouldn't appreciate um the light you feel me so that's how it is so talking about the high points um i've been making music for a while always been making amazing music mm-hmm. um from when I started making music, from when I took music as a teen and dropped my official single back then in 2015, December. Um, I've been making amazing music. I've been doing my thing, growing my fan base mm-hmm. from one level to the other. Um, down to Noah Hala, amazing song, took over the world. The world, exactly. Um, 20, last year, 2022, was an amazing year for me. I, was, I traveled all over the world. Um, it was an amazing experience. Then I, I think the highlight of the whole P that happened to me last year was the fact that I got to share a stage of a 20K capacity mm-hmm. with this kid at the Aqua Arena in Paris, mm-hmm. France. Yeah. That was like the mind blowing. The highlight it? of the whole P. Yeah, it was mind blowing. Yeah. Shout out to Whiskey, shout out to the tunes and everyone that made it happen. So uh, it's good. Right. So let's let's now look at um your song, right? That song it broke the internet. Yeah. Well, if I should say, I mean, um TikTok was there, it was on Instagram, it was everywhere. And yeah. also it led you to having a remix, right? What led you to even writing that song, first of yeah. all, and then also bringing together that team to put it out and then do the marketing and making people know about it, however it went. Just tell us all about it. Yeah, um, first of all, shout out to the producer of the song. His name is Blaze Beats, an mm-hmm. amazing producer. And also, he, there's a guitarist that that was part of the production. His name is Mickey the Guitarist, amazing guy, one of the most talented guitarists I've ever come across. So I was in the studio, we were having a session, and we were making this beat. I was listening to it over and over again. Mm-hmm. And I won't lie to you, how I was feeling the moment I heard the beat was what I sang on it. Again, right. that was my mindset at then. Bro, I was just trying to live my life. I don't like problem. I don't like what I love. Just, mm-hmm. I just want to chill. I just want to relax. You get me? Uh, what's mine is mine. What's not mine is not mine. Basically, that was how I was feeling. Like, man, problem, no finish. We need to just, man, this life problems, there's never going to be a time that it's going to be finished. Yeah, like, so yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, done sure. solving all my problems. There's always going to be something to work on as far as your life and your beating. Feel me? So that was how I was thinking. That was my mindset. That was how I was killing through life. Mm-hmm. That like that was my modus operandi. You feel me? So yeah. uh, I just decided to share with the world how I was feeling. So that's how I put um, my thoughts, um, my thought process into music. So that's how I came to. Uh, and shout out to my team. They really believe in the song because mm-hmm. I just recorded it and I sent it to my to my people and they were vibing to it. But I really didn't really really like it. Like. You didn't like I it. I knew it was a good song. I don't make no bad song. I, but I really didn't okay. like, like, like it. So I was right. about to make an album. We were selecting songs. We selected so many songs and I didn't even select it. That's that right. Song. I didn't even remember wow. I had a song like that. Okay. So shout out to my to my boss. He's also my A and Arrow. Mm-hmm. Like there's this particular song he needs to hear again that I need to send it to him. Um I sent it to him. It was like, yo, man, this is the tune I was talking about. And that was no Allah. Um, fast right. forward to when we wanted to drop the album and we were looking for a lead single to mm-hmm. introduce the album. So he was like, bro, that's the tune. That's the one. That's the one. I argued. I don't like to be I said, bro, no, no, I don't want that one. He was like, bro, just believe me. Let's go with this one. So that's how No Hala became the lead single of my debut album, OVM, the original Bad Machine album. So shout out to my team. They did an amazing work plugging the music rightly. Um, I worked with one hour PM on distribution. They were amazing also. So it was a teamwork. Right. Teamwork makes the dream work, isn't it? Teamwork definitely makes the dream work. Now that will also lead me into asking about the remix, right? You had a beautiful remix of yeah. No Wahala. How did you select um, the people that you put on it, Tiwa? So, the remix um, has I Tiwa and, so- and someone else, which I forget the name. Yeah, I mean, right? K 
kiss Daniel and Tio Savage. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What went so, into choosing uh, them? I really didn't I really didn't plan a remake. Um, I was just chilling. Shout out to be Franklin. That's like a talent man. Mm -hmm. He called me. I think I was playing. I was playing FIFA, and he called me. I was like, "Kizdane, I'm at Kizdane's house. Um, we're playing your song, No Island. and he really likes it. Uh, wouldn't mind being on it." I was like, "That's cool." Then he asked if I would like to come to the house. I said, "It's fine. I wasn't doing anything. I was just okay. playing games." Uh, I come to the house. So I went to Kizdane's house. Went to the studio. We were vibing. Um, he really liked it. He's a fan of the song. So he had his verse down already. Mm -hmm. And I think we recorded his parts. And some, um, sometime along the, the, the session, it was like Fuse to a Savage is really going to be nice on this song. Like it's going to fit in right. properly. Uh, so yeah, that's how it happened. It was just all organic. That's how it right. happened. He's done it very organic. To Savage in the song. Okay. That's how we got to no Island. Okay, let's look at the album, right? The entire body of work that had the No Wahala on it, right? Original yeah. Vibe Machine. That's out of mm -hmm. the, the whole album. I mean, um, it, it seems like No Wahala is that one song that you, you have your 100% focus on. Is there a reason and are there other plans to push the other 14 songs? Now, nah, man, I have, I have a new album ready. So right. um, I've moved on to greater things. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so I have, I'm always making music. You right. get me? And the album was was out like it's always almost two years now. So that's mm -hmm. the, the the album has done what it has, it has to, to do. You get me? So I have a new album. But before the album, later uh -huh. this year, I have like an EP that's ready to go. Okay. I just dropped a new song, like okay. the best single of the year. It's called Paul Jehovah. Paul Jehovah. Uh -huh. So after the single, the video just came out, amazing video. So I have an EP, uh, a six-track EP okay. sometime next month. Okay. Then straight to the album. Straight to the album. Now, having to work on an EP and an album for release in the same year, how is that going for you? That means that you're spending extra time in the studio, more dedication. That's like a double of everything, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. True, true. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. The network okay. is just somehow, man. We, uh, we're in Africa, I mean, baby. We're in Africa. <laughs> I know, I know, definitely. You really can't blame anyone. But let's talk about Call Jehovah. Yes. Call Jehovah, right? What yeah. were your thought processes when you were writing that song? Because, I mean, I understand that we are in a time where the economy is not really economying and um, people, you, you know, are falling call. on others, yes. But if you say that um, people shouldn't call on you and they should call on God, I mean, God has also blessed you with that um, resource to be able to help other people. I just want to know what your thought process was when you were writing that. Bro, man, <laughs> like you said something that God bless me. Uh, uh -huh. Apart from the fact that I, I, I'm that kind of person, I help a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. That's the kind of human being I am. But there has to be limits to everything because right. I have my own problems too. You get me? So, but there's a short plug. Mm -hmm. Let's not, like, let's not dis dispute the fact that God is the surest plug that if you reach out to God morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, night, 12 a.m., 2 p.m., God is God, always <laughs> going to be there to answer you. Right. You feel me? And that's not like the only angle I was writing from. Like if you listen to the second verse that says, No be glad, glad, not that this. If you are going to get it, you go jam crisis. Mm -hmm. Go down, go down, take them, take them, je, je. I know say you know easy oh ten thousand talk you one kilo family people they below say but we no go agree we go fight we go cut to you out that's like me inspiring people that no matter the problems you have no matter the challenges you're facing mm -hmm. we won't give up we're right. gonna call on God I just people call God Jehovah people call God different names different so I just names. choose yeah, to represent true. God and this song as Jehovah you feel me so I'm just basically saying. At the time that we are in right now, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, in Ghana, in anywhere in, in part Africa, of the world, I think right in every, now, every part of the world, yeah. 
You feel me? It's tough. It's not. It's crazy out here. So, who else can we call? We should call on God. Well, that no that powers, that actually no makes a lot of sense. With this explanation, it makes yeah. a lot of sense to me now. Let's let's talk yeah. about songwriting. I mean, I've asked you what your thought process was when writing the song, but have you written for other yeah. artists as well? Yeah, of course. That's my I call it my side hustle. Really. That's, okay, I do it a lot. Okay, and most times this 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 process is classified because not everybody will want to who want this information to be out there that mm. I wrote a song for, they wrote right. this song for me or they wrote that song right. for me. You get me? But I do it a lot. I produce also, I produce some of my music. Okay. Um, so I produce, I write music. But the most recent work is about to be out now. I'm going to say this because the artist is, the artist doesn't care. Okay, like, great. So let us in on it. That actually, it's one of the people that actually encourages um, songwriting mm -hmm. and it happens all over the world. People write songs for Rihanna, it does. for it does. Beyonce, even like a jazz and real bad person because they write songs for her. So it's a normal thing. Even me, I have, I might be in the studio and I'm trying to put a song together uh -huh. because I'm always around vibe machines. I'm not the only vibe machine in the building, really. So, um, yeah, so I have a new work I was doing. I worked with David O on his, on his new album that's about to be out. In March. That's nice. So, yeah, that's um, nice. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I have I have I have a couple of productions. I produced some songs and I wrote some songs in the album. So you all expect it. It's fine. Fingers crossed. Romeo is Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for that. And that's yeah. an amazing opportunity. So how did that um yeah. link up happen? You and Davido? Yeah, um, it happened in Paris, actually okay. in Europe. And it was crazy when he told me he was gonna come link me up in Paris. I was like, are you sure, bro? It was like, don't worry. I like your work. And I'm a big fan of what you do. Uh -huh. I really want you to be part of my album. I was like, bro, that's a privilege. That's amazing. I mean, that's that's David, though. That's Obi right there. Right there. Isn't it? <laughs> so it was a privilege. And I was, I was happy to work, uh, to do the work or to work the work. Mm -hmm. So we're just yeah, fingers crossed. I can't fingers wait for crossed, people to yes, definitely. everything I've been working together. Fingers crossed, yeah. fingers crossed. Now, are, are you looking to visit in Ghana anytime soon? And if so, are you also um, looking at um, working with other Ghanaian artists? And who? I was in Ghana last year, December. But anyway, yeah, I was, mm -hmm. I was in Ghana in December. I have, I have family in, in Ghana, bro. Oh, Stone okay. Boy is my family. That's okay. My Who you have a I song think. with? Yeah, Stone Boy, you have a song with. Yeah, I have yeah. a song with. That's, that's my family. I'm a Beam Nation citizen. Wow, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Can I show you the bab? I the bab. I the bab. Can I hold back But for real, Ghana is like. That's like one of my favorite places I've ever been to. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like Ghanaian pigeon is the best in Africa. I swear to God, because is it? That she gives me joy. I swear. It's the best pigeon in Africa. But not the jello fries, though, man. You guys don't quarrel with us. Please, but let's the not start the, the jello wars. Let's not start the jello wars. Not today. No, no, no. But it, the not jello, today. The jello, I'm going to be like, I was sincere to you. Uh huh. Pigeon. That's how I'm trying to be sincere with you with the job. Okay. Nigerian Jello get what I go see to about two things. But then you feel me. Anyway, I, I also asked if you are going to be working with any Ghanaian artists soon who you want to be working with. Yeah. Actually, um, yeah, I still want to, I still have songs. I'm, I'm, I'm working with Stoneboy. Okay. But I love King Promise music. I love his music King a lot. King Promise, it's okay. For days. Um, I like I like Kiddy New Kiddy's music. All right. It's good too. There are right. so many amazing. There, yeah, I'm Kamido and I. We just started talking. Uh, that's an oh, amazing artist. Also. Okay. I think we're gonna have songs. Okay. That would be yeah. nice. I mean, for all the people you've mentioned, they have really good vocals. So having to put them on yeah. a song with with you or I mean vice versa, we are looking forward to. To that as well, 
right? Before I let you off, I'll, so, I'll just love you to share with us some opportunities that you've had doing music, like on your, on your music career journey. What are some of the doors that have opened to you that you never thought were going to open to you? Um, <clears throat> actually, a lot of things that, that happened to me, mm. I visualized them. Okay. Even before it happened to me. That's how I live my life. So right. As I walk the walk, I dream the dream. So when it happens, it doesn't come like a surprise to me. Although mm. I can't predict what's going to happen in my life, but as much as I can, I envision it. I feel like that's a really amazing way to, uh -huh. to see life. So, um, like I said earlier, one of the most amazing times last year, I performed basically all over Europe last year, 2022. I was in Rotterdam. I was at Belgium, I was in Germany, Paris. All those things happened like in a short time. Yeah. But I knew I was going to do that. Bro, I'm a, I'm a superstar, ain't it? I knew you it was going to happen. And all these things and more are going to happen. So as far as I'm putting in the work, um, God is still God. Let's go. Right. You are in your eighth year of um, doing music. What would you say to a youngin, someone who is now, you know, thriving and striving to do this um, music thing? What would you say to them? Um, just, you have to really believe in yourself. I swear, you have to believe in yourself. You have to be your number one fan and also your number one critic. Mm. always try to stay as unique as possible because there's like a million people making music. And one of the ways you're going to be seen or be heard is how unique you are. And shout right. out to all the platforms that are out there today, the TikTok, the Instagram, Twitter, and all the social media platforms. Just learn how to use them and just put your stops out there and always show your talent. And it can happen anyways, bro. People have different ways of being, of being recognized and get discovered. So just keep doing your thing. Consistency is really, really a plus to what we do in the music industry and any right. other thing. You want and to any other back, thing, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. so With everything you do, percent. consistency is key. <coughs> Definitely is key. But yes, yeah. that wraps it up for us, Wonder Banton. Thank you so much for having this conversation with us. And when next year in Ghana, do also stop by our studios. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me. I had We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Thanks for the yeah, conversation. Yeah. So, guys, yes, you heard him. Consistency is key. Stay consistent. We are back on another episode of Onkyu on another day. My name is Lenny Lamote. I'll catch you again. Bye.